Good morning. I'm Pad Warrior. I'm with the product team at Xenos. And today I would like to go over the Smart View, how you can utilize the power of Smart View to quickly get to issues in your environment and root cause them. And I also want to talk to you guys about the changes that we're making in Smart View to make it even more powerful by integrating it with some event console capabilities and then a direct integration into the event console itself. So just to step back and set some context where the smart view fits in the overall array of tools that Xenos provides. This is a slide that you have probably seen before. It is an important one to reinforce because it highlights the way we think about engineering our products to help our customers quickly understand what's going on in their environment and take corrective action. So our customers are mostly IT operations managers who are in the thick of things. They are responsible for the availability and performance and other operational related concerns uh, in their environments, which can be quite complex. It can be a mixture of on-prem, it can be cloud native services and pretty much anything in between. It's very complex, dynamic. Uh, and so what our users really need are tools to help them quickly get to that forensic information. How do I understand what's really critical that's going on in my environment right now? How do I understand where I need to go to take corrective action and how do I actually then take the action that's needed. So our dashboards are designed to give you that at a glance overview of what's going on in your environment, help surface where the hot spots are so you can kind of detect uh, those areas that you need to drill further. The smart view and event tools are designed to help you then diagnose and go further into everything that you need to know to make an informed decision about what to do next. And typically that would be taking some remedial action. Now, one of the important things of course, is that uh, since these tools are powered by our underlying AI and ML capabilities, we are complementing the human intelligence with machine intelligence. So in many cases, we can surface issues even before they're likely to occur or get worse. And so there's uh, the idea of anomaly detection, for example. So by surfacing that anomalous behavior and by able to trigger off of those anomalous events, you can take proactive action even without watching it um, every day. So that's what these tools are designed to do. So now let's take a look at uh, SmartView itself. So I'm gonna begin actually with a dashboard, which is typically how most users uh, begin their uh, journey. Uh, so this is looking at a very simple dashboard I set up for this presentation. It's a single tile showing memory available on a bunch of uh, servers, or we could call them more generically as entities. So. Uh, here, uh, I am looking at uh, some interesting patterns, so, you know, like we expelled, for example, seems to have a lot of ups and downs and uh, this test rail. Now, in particular, I'm in, interested in this example to look at what's going on with test rail, uh, but I could pretty much drill in on any of these uh, entities that you see over here. So if I were to click on that, that actually hyperlinks you right to the smart view. And this is what the smart view console looks like today. And you might recognize this from your own environments. So the way to think about the smart view, how the information is uh, arranged here is if you focus on the left, the left is all about that specific entity of interest, which we also call the anchor entity. In this case, that's testrail.xenos.look. And then on the right-hand side is everything else that might be related to that anchor entity. So we call them related entities. Um, so I'll come back to these here in a few minutes. 
So focusing on the test rail itself, you'll see uh, as I scroll down, there's a lot of metrics that we're collecting. Um, some of which uh, you know, are actively being collected, some of which uh, they may not be data points available depending on what you're collecting and the frequency of collection. But in this case, I just want to, for example, uh, drill in a little bit more on the memory available because that's what I was looking at earlier. And then just by clicking on that, I can promote that to the top. Uh, I can get a view and uh, you're all familiar with the time slider from the dashboard, the same capability exists here where I can zoom in or zoom out on these different time periods. Um, so uh, that helps me to understand what's going on. And then you'll notice that as I'm mousing over uh, and changing the location of where I'm focusing on, uh, you'll notice that the uh, the graphs are also synchronizing both uh, top to bottom and left to right. And that allows you to pick up patterns that uh, might be of interest or correlated uh, both uh, across a specific entity or across different entities. So that's uh, pretty neat. Um, then on the related entities, uh, the way these related entities are surfaced is there's actually an algorithm behind it. Uh, we do some intelligent analysis, analysis to make sure, um, like you can see, for example, um, some of the factors are, you know, it's likely to affect the anchor because it is detected there's a, a likely dependency. It has more events uh, that are severe that might also be related. And, um, you know, people have voted that uh, this is a, a an entity that, that is important. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. And if I want to drill in on that, I can make, uh, that the anchor entity and you'll see that everything adjusts. And so now I'm able to uh, zoom in on that uh, second entity of interest. In this case, it has nothing else related to it. Uh, so it's only showing uh, the drill down on the specific entity in the left-hand side. Uh, and I can always uh, go back uh, by hitting the back button. And uh, you're also probably familiar with the dependency view uh, where you can now uh, get a visual. Uh, so in case you can kind of drill further and see how all of these are um, you know, related to each other. And then you'll see that there are some uh, things that are, have got some errors you know, further deeper down in the stack. Uh, and you can always drill in on on any of those that if you want to uh, by just uh, you know clicking uh, on that uh, button and that takes you uh, to that uh, related entity. So all of this works uh, very nicely. And now going back to test rail and the original view, um, you'll also notice there's the events uh, that, that you can see here highlighted by these yellow bars. You can also see some additional events here. And then if I were to expand on this, I can see um, the uh, uh, histogram of, of event patterns and, the, and which ones are critical and so on and so forth. So all of this is great and is available in the product today. But um, the question is always, you know, how do we make this better? And our customers gave us some feedback. They said, well, this is great. Uh, however, Xenos, we would really like to actually see the real events. You're, you're giving us a histogram of events and telling us what the events, uh, the counts are, but how do we actually get to those real events themselves? So that was great feedback that we considered. And uh, so this is uh, something that we have now incorporated into the product and uh, will be available shortly to all customers. So it's, um, if you contrast the previous view, let me just go back to that for a second. Uh, let me collapse this. So you can see, you know, again, we've got these yellow bars, uh, there's a tile view and dependency view. So if you just contrast that to here, you'll see there's something a little bit different. Uh, you'll notice those yellow bars have gone 
and they're replaced by what we now call this uh, DNA chart, uh, which uh, gives you a relative idea of uh, the severity of events. So you can see that there's a pattern of a lot of critical events happening, uh, maybe things uh, you know dying down a bit. I mean, there's still errors. Uh, if there were warnings that might tell you that, that perhaps whatever was causing those issues that may be even resolved, uh, and if they're going in the opposite direction, uh, that's also useful information. So it gives you a little bit more useful information about uh, your environment. Um, the other view, which is new, is the event view itself. So by clicking on that, now I can see all of the events uh, that are related. And by the way, the events that are related here are related not only to that anchor event, uh, rather the anchor entity, but also other entities uh, that we saw earlier. So you can see, you know, like Andromeda and VA Center, all of these were showing up in that uh, tile view or dependency view. And you can see that there are events uh, that they are also generating that might need some attention. And uh, the other thing that you can do here is you can expand uh, now both the left and right hand side. Uh, so the left hand side is going to be all the events that are related to the anchor. The right hand side is going to show you the superset. So not only everything related to the anchor, but also other related events. So now you can look for correlations or patterns in the between the two based on any time length, uh, that you want to zoom in on. Uh, so you can see on this particular time, uh, this one had uh, two additional critical events uh, contributed by another related entity. So that's the way to think about this. So all of this works. Uh, by the way, you'll notice that the donut's gone because the information that was in the donut is already over here. And uh, this allows for a much cleaner look uh, and optimization of screen real estate. So. Uh, you can see all of the information that you need over here. Now, uh, one thing that you might want to do is say, okay, uh, I want to drill in on um, these events that are going on. So what's really going on with test rail? So I can uh, click on this and go directly to the event console. And you'll notice that it's immediately and taking that context of test rail. So only filtering on those test rail entities and then uh, you can take a look at what's going on. And from here, of course, you can drill further on the event details. Uh, you can do some event management, uh, including setting up some uh, action triggers uh, so that if these kind of events continue to happen, uh, you can define the rule set that you want to take uh, action on. Uh, now, just going back to the... Uh, uh, smart view itself. Uh, I want to highlight a couple of other things that exist even in the current uh, smart view, but it's uh, more uh, visually dramatic when you look at events. So the point I wanted to make is that you can actually uh, drag left or right these uh, these bars, which is nice. So you can adjust what you want to see. Uh, and then the other advantage of this is you can do the horizontal split screen. And this is where this makes more seven sense to show for events because now uh, in the horizontal view, you get a little bit more event, uh, information uh, across uh, so you can read the summary in more detail. And of course you can switch back to the old view uh, if you like. And, uh, and of course, uh, by clicking on the detailed event itself. All of that information is already stored in the summary. So hopefully that was a helpful overview of what's going on in uh, SmartView and uh, the updates that we're making. Uh, so going back uh, to summarize things, the SmartView is um, designed to help uh, you drill down into really what matters in your environment. It's combining a lot of things together, such as the AI ML, the anomaly detection, and the intelligent analytics to surface critical things to the uh, forefront. Uh, we're giving you all of the information related uh, that you to make uh, a decision, whether it's about uh, not only that specific entity, but all the related entities, the metrics, the events. And then you can switch between the tile and dependency views and now the new event view. 
And also, uh, by the way, uh, we not only support uh, the CZ data sources, uh, which are uh, what we have been doing for several years, but also uh, the recent streaming data sources that we have announced, such as Microsoft Teams data sources, uh, Kubernetes, and uh, more to come. So all of those tools, uh, there's there's nothing different that you have to do between um, looking at a Microsoft data source, for example, versus a, a more uh, you know traditional uh, server environment or what have you in your on-prem. Uh, the tools all work together and integrate together uh, in that seamless manner, uh, regardless of what you're looking at. And that goes to my point earlier that this is these tools are designed to help you navigate your complex IT environments uh, as quickly and efficiently as possible. And that's really the benefit, right? It's helping you make those decisions uh, quickly and in, a, in, a, in an improved and efficient fashion so you can get to the root cause, uh, take corrective action and uh, do that proactively. Uh, so uh, with that, I'm going to stop the recording and